Okay, and I'm just going to go over the toolbox here, and uh, or the tools panel, and just go over each one of the tools and just give you a brief description about them, and just maybe a small demo of each one of the tools without getting too crazy, because we're going to cover a lot of this stuff uh, more in depth later on in this uh, DVD tutorial. So the first you have the move tool, which the move tool allows you to, um, you know, move objects and stuff like that. Now. I advise against using the move tool and just using control or command to move objects that are on um, in your image or on your layers. Now shift alt and command or control are totally um, invaluable as far as flexibility for moving things and duplicating things and stuff like that and we'll get into that a little bit later but uh, skip the move tool that's kind of like a, eh, you don't have to use it. Anyway the marquee tool which is probably the most common way to select things is just your square marquee and um, then you have your elliptical your single row and single column elliptical just makes you know an elliptical selection and then you have your lasso tools your lasso tool polygon lasso tool and magnetic lasso tool um, so your lasso tool allows you to sort of freeform select. Polygon sort of gives you a stepped angular approach to selecting. And then your magnetic lasso, which uses contrast in your image to kind of go around and do like a higher fidelity selection. Let me zoom in here a little bit for you. You can see it's trying to use the contrast of the image to make a selection. Again, I'm uh, going to cover that stuff in the selection part of this tutorial, but uh, not here. Anyway, you have your magic wand tool, which allows you to um, select using a wand. The quick selection tool, which is uh, lets you quickly paint like a selection. Um, and it uses kind of uh, like a color range to sort of select stuff. And moving on to the crop tool. Now the crop tool allows you to obviously crop your image, but another cool thing about the crop tool is it allows you to change your canvas size. So you can draw your crop tool bounding box outside of your image, and it'll actually enlarge your image too. So pretty handy you have your eyedropper tool which allows you to single select a color from your image or you have your color sampler tool which allows you to sample up to four samples which I have one two three four and um, you can sort of control and move these around and so on and so forth you have the ruler tool which allows you to measure distances and locations and like angles and stuff like that. And then you have your note tool, which allows you to type notes, um, you know, like to your art director um, or from your art director. And uh, <laughs> Don't laugh at my picture here. Some people think uh, think it looks like me, or it's a self-portrait or something. Anyway, uh, moving on, we have your count tool, which allows you to count objects or elements that are in your image, and you could just click and be like, "Hey, this is one. His ear is two. His eyes three. His nose is four, etc." You could change the color, and uh, go from there. You have your spot healing brush tool, um, which sort of removes blemishes and things like that, and tries to, um, you know, sort of do some quick photo retouching and imperfections. You have your healing brush, which um, kind of paints with a sample from in your image or like a pattern, and tries to remove things. And then you have your patch tool, which allows you to. Um, select an area and kind of move it to another area to sort of patch in 
or fill using a sample or a pattern. And then you have your red eye tool, which this isn't a photograph, so the red eye tool isn't going to work, but it's kind of like a a little bit of a one-click magic bullet solution for the red eye tool. Then you have your brush tool, which obviously allows you to just paint. And um, you have your pencil tool, which sort of allows you to do hard line drawing. That's um, aliased. And your color replacement tool, which uh, substitutes one color for another. And your mixer brush tool, which blends sampled color with an existing color. So it's interesting. And we'll get into more of that stuff later. Moving on, you have your clone stamp tool, which you make your sample, and then you could clone. And your pattern, which will use a pattern from your options bar and allow you to paint in a pattern. Etc. Your history brush tool. Now the history brush tool allows you to sort of um, paint like a copy of like a selected state of the image in the current window. But uh, we haven't really done a lot of editing to this image, so it's not really going to work here. But we'll have an example later on. And then our art history brush tool, which sort of paints stylized strokes. Um, you can see it's really blobby, and you could kind of change some um, some settings there. But again, we're not going to get into this right now. Um, this is just an overview. We have our eraser, which obviously allows you to erase parts of your image your background eraser tool which erases to your background and like a transparency and then we have our magic eraser tool which erases like solid colored areas um, to sort of transparency with like a click so it kinda just removes everything that it thinks it should remove which is sometimes handy. Moving on, we have your gradient tool. You can go ahead and just draw a gradient. And using your options bar you can kind of select what type of gradient you want. And we go over this later as well. And then the paint bucket tool. We could go ahead and fill areas of your image. The blur tool obviously allows you to blur just by painting. Sharpen tool allows you to sharpen by painting. Smudge tool obviously allows you to smudge. The dodge tool allows you to sort of brighten up and saturate different areas. And you could do your shadows, midtones, highlights, and again, it's just an another painting tool that can help you while you're painting on things. The burn tool, same thing. Does a color burn to your image though while painting? and you can sort of see what it does there. And then again you have your shadow midtones, highlights, exposure, etc. And the sponge tool which sort of absorbs color and desaturates. Kind of sucks out the color, sucks out the saturation from it. You have your pen tool and all your pen tools which is 
you know, your pen tool, freeform pen tool, and all that, and path creation. And we'll get into more of that later. Your type tool, which allows you to type, but as we proved, I cannot type. And our path selection and direct selection tool, which is associated with the pen tool and points. We'll get into more of that later. And we have our shape tool, which is our vector shapes, allows you to create shapes and vectors, rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, line, custom shape. And then we have here our object rotate tool, camera rotate, which are 3D oriented, we'll cover later, and your hand tool. No jokes about the hand tool, but you can kind of uh, select and pan around your image with the hand tool. The rotate view tool, reset your view, and zoom tool. And then at the very bottom here, we have our foreground color, our background color, and we could swap these, reset the defaults, and last but not least, our quick selection tool. And sort of do some fine tuning selection, and then select that area based off of brushes. And then you can just edit. And you can just color tweak that soft selection. So now that I've completely ruined my image, um, we've gone through an overview of the toolbar or the tool panel and uh, the different tools that are in there. And through this DVD, we'll be using them in different ways and um, talking about the certain options that they have for the option bar to sort of control them and to make them more flexible. But uh, that's pretty much it for the toolbar. Now let's talk about moving in Photoshop. Now, part of your workflow is always going to be moving things around on layers um, when you're creating things if you're not painting. Um, if you're creating graphics and you're using lots of layers and you're kind of aligning things, moving different shapes around on different locations, um, or moving selections, like it's really good to get your workflow nailed down for, the, for moving stuff. Now, in the toolbar, there's the Move tool, which if you click on it, you could move. Great, that's all awesome. But um, what you want to do is just use the control key or the command key to move. Now just holding that down and on any layer, it's like the built-in move tool. You don't really need to use the move tool for anything or use V for the hotkey when basically control or command is that hotkey that exists for all the other tools. And it doesn't even matter what tool you have selected. Command or control will always move. So it's totally efficient to use that. It's totally um, something that you definitely want to get in the habit of using. Now, also, when you control and click, you have your layers that pop up here. Now, the only ones that we have visible is Levels 1, Green, and Color Fill. So if we turn on our other ones, you can see that um, two are on top of each other, but to make this faster and to move it easier, you can hold down Control, Grab your red and shift it over. And that's all by using shift and control or command. It's not move to the move tool, move your object, select another layer, move to the object. You can right click, blue, move. Or you can right click, green, move. Or right click, red, and move. So it's way more efficient to be using stuff like this. Now, also by holding control or command, I'm going to select my green you can use the arrow keys to kind of step through pixel by pixel and move your object at a precise level. You can also use shift to move it in increments of 8 pixels. So again, it's pretty handy to do that if you're trying to line up something perfectly um, or just need to nudge something around. Um, but that's definitely another thing that you could do with the control key and the shift key. 
Um, also, if you hold down Alt and click on it, you could bring up the layer properties for that layer, your layer styles, duplicate, delete, convert to smart object, rasterize, and so you could do all a bunch of layer commands right from the Alt key rather than going into your layers palette and bringing it up there. So again, just another helpful thing that using the Shift, Alt, and Command keys or Control, there's a lot of flexibility there that it can make your workflow a little bit faster. Now, by using Alt and Command or Alt and Control, you get your little arrows that pop up here. Now what you could do here is duplicate. So if you hold those down and drag, you'll get a duplicate of your object, a duplicate layer, and you could go ahead and just move that around really fast too. So again, that's really helpful. And you could also do all three of them and shift will constrain that. Now shift in Photoshop always constrains your movement. It moves it in a straight line or a straight line up and down. So shift always constrains. So again, using these keys are extremely powerful. Right now I'm going to rasterize this and then I'm going to make a selection and move this. Now what this is doing is you could see let me hide this really quick, the selection. My layer styles are sort of getting um, grouped together because the layer styles are affecting all the pixels that are on that layer. And so what I'm doing now is duplicating the pixels on that layer and not making a duplicate layer. So looking at it now, you can see that I have two green circles on the green layer. And so now my layer styles are looking at the pixels for this layer and now affecting all those pixels rather than just the localized one of the circle it's localized to both of the circles so it's just something to keep in mind when you're duplicating things if you duplicate a selection like this it duplicates the pixels on that layer so those are extremely valuable in your workflow with Photoshop and um, it's good to really get to know those things